Hi, I'm back. So it's been a little over a month, I think, since um, I uh, talked to you and, uh, you know, made the video so I could talk to you and whatever. But um, so, you know, it's been a little bit of time, but not too much time. And I was like, do I go back into the uh, um, astrology, astro bleh, astrology straight away? Or um, do I just talk about stuff? Well, um, but before I do, uh, thank you for sticking with me. And any uh, new subscriber, thank you for showing up. That was that's that's really nice. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to mix a little bit of both, you know. Um, so, and it's so interesting because. Uh, Tonight, which is uh, June 6th, we have the um, Gemini full moon, new moon, sorry, new moon. We have the Gemini new moon and, um, you know, Gemini's communication and uh, talking and listening. Am I doing much listening now? I don't know. Maybe I'm listening to my own voice, but, you know, regardless. Um, but it's, if we look at the sky real quick, okay, I want to show you real quick. So, um, this is, oh, and if you see, uh, scars on my hand, I'll talk about that. Don't, don't worry about that. I, I had the thing happen and I'll explain it. But anyway, I'm going to try to keep my arms out of you. But so here is, uh, Gemini, right? Gemini and the moon. And this is a whole stellium. Stellium means like three or more planets in one sign. Well, we've got Jupiter, Mercury. Hopefully this is not backwards. Kind of looks backwards. I don't know. But we have Jupiter, Mercury, the moon, the sun, and Venus all together here in Gemini. That's a lot. That's five. And it's um, so, you know... And it just bears repeating that, you know, we always have, like, um, this moon energy, like, it comes in waves and it comes, you know, you could start to feel it three days before and three days after or whatever and the thing. But, and all of this stellium, this Gemini energy is going to, um, we're going to have, you know, three or more here for most of June, I think until... Uh, june 17th something like that right so that's a long time so lots of gemini stuff and um what is gemini stuff neighborhoods roads uh thinking writing listening teaching um communication um it's social butterfly learning curiosity asking questions um, playing with ideas, being mutable with your ideas. Um, what do I mean by mutable? Because like sometimes we hear stuff like that, and it's it's very um, chameleon. Sorry about the gl uh, glare, but it's very chameleon like. You know, like you're gonna act differently if you are in front of your boss, or I don't know. I mean, you're just going to act different in different situations, right? Different with your, different with your friends and different with your, maybe different with your family or maybe different with like, I don't know, some random, random person at the gas station or something. You know what I mean? So, um, and Geminis are really good at that, really good at being a chameleon. And, um, but it's also funny and witty and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, one of the first things that I learned about Gemini is that it's kind of got that, um, they call it a social butterfly, right? And a social butterfly is like, I, I'm pretty sure you've seen a butterfly fly, right? And it just does this like, you know, so it's not flying in a straight line. It's kind of like, kind of random and all over the place a little bit. So that is Gemini. And um, so, but, you know, and the other thing too is that I remember when I was first learning astrology or trying to, you know, really get into it, especially looking things other than my own, you know, my own sign, um, 
this one, um, ooh, my, yeah, sorry, my, I got a scar on my wrist, but Pisces here and uh, Gemini here, these two signs, Pisces and Gemini, they kind of feel like they could, you know, be confused. The thing with Gemini down here is that it's, um, it's also a bridge, right? You can, and it's like a bridge between heaven and earth. And you can, you can kind of see that there. You can kind of see like, okay, suppose up here is heaven and down here is earth and there's a bridge, right? And, you know, there's the, um, Greek god, uh, Hermes. Um, I think it was Hermes. The one that was like the messenger, the messenger of the gods, right? And so Mercury and, um, is messenger, right? And, um... So bringing the messages back and forth. And, you know, and Geminis are also really good at debating, selling, um, you know, that kind of stuff too, because they're just ready to play with ideas, which is so interesting, right? Um, and uh, so clearly I'm talking about the astrology first, and then I'll go into, you know, more personal stuff. But anyway, so... Um, and then I have this line here because that is a square. It's um, 90 degrees angle, right? So it would be like 30, 60, 90, right? Um, uh, be, and Pisces is a mutable sign and uh, Gemini is a mutable sign. And so this is a mutable square. And so, um, and it's up here to Saturn. Now, normally Saturn is very, very strong, right? Because it's it's bigger and it stays, it does, you know, it's more, doesn't move as fast. It's, it's you know, it stays longer in its sign than, you know, some of these other ones do. But, you know, we have so much going on over here. And Mercury is the um, uh, planet for this sign, right? So because Mercury is the planet, plus the sun is here, um, and Venus was also considered like, you know, an esoteric ruler, I have to really get back to studying the esoteric astrology because it's different. You know, in regular astrology, it would be Mercury being the thing. But anyway, I'm getting, I'm nerding out on this stuff. But point being, what does that mean for us, right? Um, It just, it, it means that like, you know, I think we're, there's an over Gemini, there's an abundance of communication, there's a bund, abundance of talking, right? Abundance of ideas, a lot of explosion of ideas, right? And it's just being amplified by the sun. And then there's a lot of people having feelings about it with the moon and with Venus there and maybe being attracted to it. Um but, you know, and it's almost like, um, you know, when I was thinking about this, this is what I was thinking about. Okay, call me weird, but I have been thinking about Halloween, <laughs> even though it's June, right? Because um, I like Halloween that much. But anyway, I'm guessing, I'm, I'm thinking you may have heard of the movie um, Nightmare Before Christmas, or you've You've heard about it or you watched it or something, right? So you watched uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and um, Jack Skellington, right? And Jack Skellington um, sings the song, What Is This? Like he's he's learning about Christmas, right? And he's like, what is this? And this, this tree and this fat man in a red suit. And what is this? And what is this? You know? And that's the energy of Gemini. It's like, you know, being a tourist and going, Ooh, what's that? And what's that? And what's that? And I want to know about this. And I want to know about this. And let me tell, let me find out about this. Right. And it's interesting too, because across the way we have, um, uh, what up here, up there. Yeah. Up here is a uh, Sagittarius. And so Sagittarius is, you know, the, flip side of Gemini. Gemini, you know, is considered one of the younger, like Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Cancer. These are like the young signs, right? And um, and you can see it in people who have uh, these in their, have these strong signs in their um, chart. For example, you know, I'm, 
I'm an Aries sun and I have a Taurus rising and but in my progressed chart now I have a cancer all of that is very young you know I mean I'm 50 but I don't I, I know I don't seem I seem younger than maybe another 50 year old or something like that that's that's my point um, so, but Gemini has been also known to be, is, is the twins, right? So two-faced, right? So this is why I bring Sag, um, Sagittarius into the mix because Gemini will flip it around, reverse it, turn it upside down, play with it, what all the things, right? Yes. Okay. We've got, um, we've got, you know, it's strong here, but what happens when, um, you know, there's, we can get, it because all of that, uh, you know, information or people or Gemini could, or neighborhood or community or siblings could be like almost too much. Then we go up to Sagittarius and um, Sagittarius will be like, okay, let's, Let's look at this from an eagle's eye point of view. Let's look at it from the big picture. And what does this all mean? You know, and, and what is our, um, what is our philosophy, philosophy going to be about this? You know, and, and how do we, how do we look at this from a spiritual point of view? You know, which is also um, this uh, Pisces, because Pisces is also spiritual. Plus Pisces is also saying, you know, rest rest and uh, retreat right so and Saturn you know is still pretty st up here Saturn is still pretty strong and Saturn is saying you know th there's a you know a, th a lesson here about rest and retreat and spirituality and um, maybe even looking at our self-sabotaging behaviors and and um you know, the things that need to be healed, right? The thing, and, and um, putting a limit, like, yes, we can go crazy because we also have Neptune up here. We can go crazy with our imagination, but Saturn's like, uh-uh, uh-uh. We're not going to go crazy with our imagination and we're not going to play the what if game. We're not going to, um, you know, take it to the extreme. We're going to, we're going to try to rein it in a little bit, and, and this one with uh, Gemini too. We're going to try to rein it in a little bit, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, so uh, teacher, this this axis right here between um, Sagittarius and Gemini is the student-teacher axis. Um, you know, uh, I have a, a strong um, Gemini thing in my chart. I have Mars and and Saturn and Je Gemini. So, you know, hands, um, arms, shoulders, um, uh, even maybe chest a little bit, you know, so that rules this part of the body, right? And it's always like, oh, let me get all the information, right? But anybody who has taught anything, you guys know, if you've taught anything, even if it's like a little kid, right? You know that um, as you're teaching, you're learning, right? So it's, it's, it's yes, this world is du dualistic, right? Where there's, there's um, opposites in, in this world, but um, the opposites are part of the one, right? And that's um, part of this uh, Gemini thing, you know? Because Gemini has two sides. It's like um, two faces, you know. Am I making sense? I hope I'm making sense. And then the other thing interesting was, is that, um, uh, oh, you know, looking at just playing off the whole Gemini archetype and the whole Gemini energy, right? It's just like, okay, give me more. Give me more information. Give me more. Give me more, you know. And it it's... It doesn't take um, anything too seriously. Gemini can also be the jack of all trades too. Now, while I'm saying all this, you know, thing is, is that you have Gemini somewhere in your chart, right? I'm not gonna go through all of the houses right now because, um, you know, it's my first video back after a while and um, you can look and see which house you have Gemini in. And then you can like 
go to Google. I, I know I should probably do all houses for and all signs, but just this time I'm not. And, and really the thing, the other part of the reason is too, is that Gemini is more interested in learning about the outside world than they are about learning themselves. Do you know what I mean? So Gemini is more about like, just give me a bunch of facts and a bunch of random trivia information. That's Gemini, you know? So, um, yeah. And yeah, so playing off this whole Gemini um, thing, is that the moon, what degree is that at? That is at um, uh, 16 degrees. Now, it's interesting because... If you take 16 um, and you go 1 plus 6 is 7, well, 7 is very spiritual. Going back up here to um, Pisces, very spiritual, right? 7 is like, you know, you think of the 7 of Pentacles or 7 of Cups or or uh, 7 of Wands or uh, 7 of Swords, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, and, but there's like, Gemini is like, okay, let's take the, let's take this information and see how many ways we can look at it, right? And so um, another way to look at it is, is because 16 is, would be in the second deacon, which means it's like not in the first third, but it's in the second third. So it's in the middle, right? It's in the middle. It was like, it's, if you split this up into thirds, here's the first deacon, here's the second, here's the third. So because it's in the third, second deacon, that would be the Virgo, the uh, Virgo deacon, which is um, also ruled by Mercury. So again, it's speaking about the uh, Mercury stuff again, which is, you know, really important because Mercury is such a big player here. And then like, what if, what if you just look at 16 as a number? Well, you could do, you could also, I mean, I thought about like, what is 16 in the major arcana? It's the tower, right? So tower, yes, that can be um, a little bit um, frightening. And and the last thing we all need right now is something frightening, but you you get it. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't, because why? Because um, recently I was reminded that like everything that we have been through, we've survived, you know, and that's, that's amazing. Like every, because just the fact that you're alive means you've survived everything. And, um, you know, I, I have faith and that Pisces goes back up there to, to faith again, you know, having faith or having trust or, or willing to let go or just to be in the flow and to have that ease with this square here, there's um, there's like a little bit of a conflict. It's like, yes, I want to let go, but yes, I want to know all the information. But if I know all the information, I'm going to get nervous. And if I get nervous, then I'm not going to be able to rest. But if I rest, then I'm not going to know all the information, you know? So it's like back and forth. So what do you do? Well, it's kind of like you got to... You got to know your limits, which which goes back up here to um, Saturn. Saturn saying, you know, know your limits. But um, and then the other thing, too, is if we just look at 16 as a degree, 16 as a degree would be the cancer degree. Why? Because if Aries is, would be degree one, Taurus would be degree two. And then we get all the way up here to Pisces. That would be degree 12. Right. Then 13, 14. 15, 16. So it would be the 16th degree, which is six, cancers ruled by the moon. So it talks again about the moon. Very strong. I mean, there there are no coincidences in the world, is there? There, there isn't, right? Well, I don't think there is. So um, yeah, so interesting. And I put this line here because these three, the moon, the sun, and uh, Venus are all like standing um, shoulder to shoulder with each other, right? So they're in a conjunction, um, which just makes them more amplified, meaning that um, the, the sun, the sun, that circle there 
is just um, giving like life giving energy to the moon and to the um, uh, Venus there, which is so interesting. Now, new moons, um, as we know, has to do with like starting something new for the next six months, right? And um, so that'll be interesting. I mean, especially here in the United States, I'm not going to I'm not going to talk about like, you know, other stuff, but you know what I'm talking about. So, um, but in, in how do we do that? I think it's with balancing with this, um, this Pisces energy of, you know, knowing limits, having faith, trust, rest, um, being able to surrender to the flow, um, you know, going into the spiritual dimensions and then also here with um, Sagittarius, which has to do with um, also spirituality and, um, uh, you know, forming your own philosophy in life, you know, that kind of thing. So, and then just to get more nerdy, because this is, that's what Gemini does. Gemini is like all the information. In fact, Gemini could also be like, you know, the reporter, the investigator, almost almost like an investigator type of thing. One of the things, um, actually, comparatively speaking with astrology, not too long ago, like 1930s or 40s or something, there was somebody who created these um, Sabian symbols. And so that means that for every degree all 360 degrees of the uh, circle, they they channeled a message. And so 16 degree of Gemini is the woman who is um, uh, giving a passionate speech. I thought that was really interesting. So it's like this passionate persuasion type of thing. Um, very interesting, you know, considering what we see that's going on in the world, you know. Um, I'm sure you know what's going on. I don't, I don't need to tell you, I don't need to spell it out for you. But um, yeah, so basically what I would say is that, you know, there's a lot here to do with trying to keep the faith and rest and um, retreat and and realizing when when we're dealing with our own self-sabotaging behaviors, but also keeping our eye on what's happening locally or in information and, um, uh, you know, talking to learning, learning and, and um, not taking it too seriously, right? Because Gemini doesn't, doesn't take things seriously, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, and then we'll have that uh, um, stellium stuff with Gemini. That means like three or more planets in Gemini for, I don't know, till like June, what did I say? June uh, 17th. Yeah. Okay, that was that. Um, and so, yeah, um, and it's just, it's no coincidence that I'm... I'm putting this video out today on the new moon of Gemini. Now, um, if you saw my wrist, yeah, it's trying to heal. I'm putting like some healing stuff on my wrist, but I, um, it's, it's kind of gross. It's, it's like at one point I was thinking like, what if it was like each little spot was like a star and I could just draw the constellations, you know, but it's like, what happened was, right? Like, so I told you, I, I turned 50 in March, right? So I got this text message saying, well, you know, you're 50, it would be a good idea to get your vaccine for shingles. And I've heard about shingles and I thought, well, okay, shingles is a terrible, terrible thing. I don't want to get shingles. So let me get the vaccine. Next thing you know, it was like, I don't know, a little bit later, like two weeks later, i broke out in this rash like on my uh, both of my arms on my thighs on my stomach um yeah on my on my hips and it went it started to spread down to my um calf muscles and I was like oh and it itches it itches and then I so I start scratching it and it's raised and it starts getting scabby 
So I started taking antihistamine because that helps with the itch. But the thing is, though, is I don't know, to be honest with you, I don't know if it's because of the vaccine. And I'm not like there's supposed to be two um, inoculations, but I'm not getting the second one. But I don't know if it was the vaccine that did it or I went to I was visiting like local um, metaphysical fairs, right, locally. And I was like, oh, you know what? I I really want to visit the local metaphysical fairs, right? So, oh, you can see the scab over there. Um, so I thought, oh, okay, let me go. And um, someone who was selling, um, it was like this uh, healthy green, um, like super powder thing that had like spirulina and wheatgrass and um barley and and I don't know some other supposedly healthy stuff right so I was like oh cool let me let me buy a bag of that and you know so I was and you know the instruction said take a teaspoon and put it in your water and drink it every day so I was doing that so I don't and I started the vaccine I, I got the vaccine and I got the I started that that green healthy drink like at the same time so I don't know which one excuse me I don't know which one you know was the one that I had a, a reaction to but I just I quit both of them I still have like I don't know about half a bag of that um green healthy drink or powder stuff so maybe I'll go back to I don't know I'll try it we'll see but maybe not um so I looked online to see if there was like more information, but I didn't see anything. So yeah, um, but I just, I want these, um, the itchiness to go. I don't want to get, and the funny thing is, is that I get hay fever every fall, right? So, and it's like bad hay fever where my eyes are watery, my nose is runny and I'm sneezing. So by the time all of this itchiness on my skin goes away, hay fever season's gonna come. And I'm just gonna have to take hay fever medicine and I'm gonna take have to take antihistamines anyway. <laughs> I hope you got your coffee and your whatever, because this is apparently a little bit longer. So yeah, I'm just telling you stuff what was going on. But um, but I'm still glad I went to the um to the metaphysical sphere. You know, because like last year I did one. I, I participated in one, right? And it's crazy because last year when I participated in that fair, right? I had to spend $300 just to participate, right? And I had to bring my own furniture, like my own table, my own chairs, my own decorations, blah, blah, blah. And I did tarot and astrology, right? And I mean, I made the money back plus some, which is awesome in two days. But, and, and, and people were still telling me like I undercharged, right? I think I was charging like 30, 30 maybe forty dollars or something for for reading but um people are like you're you're undercharging but you know that that's just me like um my mom was asking me she's like why why don't you charge what everybody else is charging because like if you go on google and you look and you see how much um people charge for a birth chart reading they charge like a hundred dollars and i don't and I just, I, cause I, and I told her, I'm like, I just, I just feel like it's like my duty. Yeah. My duty to be charitable, you know? So, um, and of course she didn't say anything because, you know, whatever. Um, because I can <laughs> Aries, Taurus, you guys, you know if you know, you know, because Aries hot-headed and Taurus stubborn and... <laughs> but anyway, so, um, and then, but I did, go, um, I am glad I went because I went to just that one and a couple of other ones. And when I was at the one where I got that green health thing, whatever, I talked to the person that was organizing it. It cost $40 to participate compared to the $300. I was like, oh my God. Cause like forty dollars is so much better than three hundred dollars, you know, and and then I was like all excited because they've got like uh, upcoming events for the rest of this year, and I was like, yay, I'm gonna do that. And then plus I thought, you know, I mean, I have some junk journals, some of the junk journals that I use personally. I think 
someone was asking me like how many junk journals do I have now I, uh, personally for myself and I have like I don't know eight <laughs> eight of them or something silly like that but and I just you know recently made one I haven't by the way, I haven't um, done any writing. I've done writing in some of my other journals. Like I've been in my summer journal. I've been, I did a little writing in my astrology. I did a little bit of writing because I like to organize my stuff. You know, like the astrology stuff goes in one journal. Summer stuff goes in another journal. Fall and Halloween stuff goes in another journal. That kind of thing. And it's just like a thing that's like a perennial kind of... Can I use perennial even though it's not about plants, I just did. <laughs> so um, it's just something that's just going to continue on for years and years. Hope I don't know. We'll see. I, I have this. Um, well, no, I'll, I'll wait until I share that later. But so but like I said, I am glad that I went because it's just, you know, the metaphysical fairs are so much fun. And it's like being a kid in a candy shop. And and one of them that I went to, I think I meant went to three of them, but one of them that I went to, it was so funny because um, there was an astrologer there. And so we, we totally geeked out on the astrology stuff and anybody else that would come walking in, they'd be like, well, I don't understand. But you know, we understood we were saying. And, and, you know, she was really cool, but she also told me she's got an Aries stellium, stellium, Aries stellium in her seventh house of relationships. So she was just joking and she's like, she's like, yeah, my relationship is with myself. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And, um, but we still exchange phone numbers and, you know, she's like, if you ever want to talk astrology, you know, cause there's not a lot of people that talk astrology and, you know, that kind of stuff. Plus there's not a lot of people that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's just where I live. Yeah. There are metaphysical fair, um, fairs and, and, you know, stores and whatnot and things like that. But, um, conversations may not always spark up, you know, you know, you, you get what I'm saying, right? So, um, but, and then the other thing to, you know, finding out that information. So I got really excited and I was like, I'm going to make, I was, I had, I still have like, I'm in the middle of the process, right? Cause I have eight junk journals and they were all going to be like, um, a uh, garden type theme. Right. And, um, I even went, I, you know, for like $3, most of the stuff that I have in my, I have a video, um, should I link some of it? I just, yeah. you can go look, but I have a, a video, maybe I'll link, I don't know, we'll see, but I have a video where I showed my, um, collection of, uh, art supplies, you know, and junk journal supplies, right? It's small. It's small because some people uh, dedicate a whole bedroom to their junk journal supplies. And I don't, I dedicate like, you know, I don't know, part of my closet and then like five or six boxes and things like that. But anyway, so, but I still had enough, like I could make eight junk journals, right? And I know I could sell them, right? And let me show you, cause it's just, it's fun to look at. Hold on. So, and I've heard other people talking. My hair is so fuzzy. Don't look at my hair. But other people were talking about like um, digital uh, junk journal kits, right? Where you can print out like a whole slew of of printables and like make them into tags and envelopes and pockets and pages and all the things. So I was like, yeah. And because like you can print out like, I don't know, 30 pages for three bucks. So, and, and you can do it over and over again. This is on Etsy, by the way. So some of the pages, so this, this is, uh, so I picked this one, which is um, the, uh, can you see that? So that's um, a page. So it's, it's, I forget what it's called, but it's, I think it was apothecary. And then this page is just like, background paper and then um let's see oh all these little these little images that can be cut out and little um 
backwards. Hopefully that's not backwards. And um, like some of those images. So I thought that was really cute and I could, you know, print a, a duplicates of those and put those in the junk journals, right? Along with like miscellaneous papers and things like that and whatever. And then the, the material and the lace and the ribbons and all the things and the buttons and whatnot. But then I broke out in this rash and basically <laughs> I feel like, you know, it just, it's not, I just don't feel very presentable. Like even like if I go to the bank or the grocery store or wherever, I feel like I have to hide my arms, but it's so flipping hot and I don't, I'm not wearing long sleeves, you know, to go outside because that's just not happening. So... But still, I just don't feel it's like very presentable and, you know, I'm not going to put like a bunch of cover up. It still would be bumpy and everything and people would know it's cover up and, you know, makeup and all the things. So, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be going doing a metaphysical. I I don't think I will be doing a metaphysical fair this summer because, you know, I don't, I just don't, and plus I got a little bit down here too. I got a little bit of rash. That one is easy. That one I could cover up if I wanted to, but, um, the ones on my arms are, it's a lot. It's kind of a lot, you know, and if you saw a little bit on my wrist too, and it, it started spreading towards the back of my hand a little bit, which is not good. So yeah. Um, but you know, hopefully, I mean, the, the thing is, is that like, uh, this is my personal, uh, in numerology, I think this is per my personal two year, which has to do with, um, I would say relationships, um, you know, and balancing things out and more so relationships, like maybe other stuff too. Um, but, oh, there, by the way, there was a numerologist at one of the fairs. Um, and he had a really good pamphlet. It was really nice. Um, and with like a, a good amount of information on it. But, um, so yeah. Um, so I, that's part of the reason why I, I was like going around and checking people out and checking out different fairs and talking to different people, you know, so, um, but you know, next year, um, well, uh, it'll be, and how do you find your personal year? You take your month, at least this is the way I understand it. You take your month, your day of your birthday, you know, your birthday is, you know, whatever month you were born in, whatever day you were born in. And then this year, which is 2024, right? So, um, Oh, that goes back to the whole Gemini thing. I forgot to mention too, that like that 16 degrees, you know, one and six adds up to seven and seven is right before eight, but we're in an eight year, but we're only halfway in. So it's only like, it's really technically 7.5. I know I'm nerding out, but it's all right. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't lose you yet. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, so that was interesting. Oh, and then, um, so there was some stuff going on with, like, uh, some people in my life, like, somebody that, uh, from the past showed up again in my email, and, um, but it's just weird. It's just, I don't know, it's just a strange thing, and the person is just acting strange, so... I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. But, um, and then, you know, there's other stuff that's been going on. So, um, you know, with, uh, people that I know and it's been a little bit strange, but as far as my family goes, I can say that, you know, knock on wood, everything is pretty much the same. I think, I feel like, I don't know. Um, so that's okay. But, uh, yeah, what, what else did I wanted to tell you about? Oh, I, I did a collaboration with, um, Ginger Faye. So that was, that was a lot of fun. And Nancy. So that was a lot of fun. We did readings for people. Um, 
and and then oh well, the other thing too is that I I kind of said I didn't buy any new decks but I did I bought one it was on clearance moon magic and um 50 cards 50 cards right that's a lot um now the box is stupid and why do I say it's stupid because it's too big for the cards so yeah why do I have still have the box I don't know I have no idea but so I keep it in uh this bag which Carol gave me it's working really really well and it has a little thing right there very very well made and it's all stuff about the moon so I can oh some of these are upside down um so I can do a proper flip through of that now, it, some of these might not be very intuitive at first glance. So what I did is I wrote keywords on the back. You can kind of see that in black over there. So, yeah. This is my um, second moon um, deck, but it's, it's beautiful. So, yeah. Um, let me know in the comments if you want me to do a proper walkthrough of that. I have used it. Um, how have I used it? I have used it, one, I kind of used it as manifestation. Like, you know, because um, there was a, I don't know what there was. There was a goal, there was one called um, Silver Dollar. And I thought, ooh, who doesn't want more money right now, does it? It's just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wish I was one of those people that believed in the lottery, but I'm not. I'm not one of these people that believe in that. I wish I was. So I'm trying to find the um, silver moon. If I can find, it's going to be the last one, isn't it? It sure is. Damn it. Where, where? Did I? I missed it. I don't know. Basically, it's a full moon with uh, the word silver moon, and it's just, you know, pretty looking. Um, if I can find it, I'll show. Oh, there you go. So the silver moon. I also thought that was really pretty. And I was like, oh, I'll just use that as like manifestation. And it worked. It, it worked. It really did work. I'm not gonna tell you how much, but it worked. <laughs> so, um, what else? And the book is the book is nice too because the book has um, a color. Oh, where did the book go? I don't know. The book is around here somewhere. I, I just don't have it with me right now. So, okay, I haven't talked too too long, have I? I don't know. But um, there is definitely more astrology. And that maybe that's part of the reason why I do astrology. You know, the funny thing is, like, once you start looking for, you know, once you're, like, into the kind of videos that you're into, then the algorithm knows that this is the kind of videos that you're into. And then it just shows you more and more of that. And I'm like, oh, my God gosh, there's too many people that are doing astrology. What am I doing? You know, but I love learning about it. I love learning about the astrology. I mean, I just, I think it's just endlessly fascinating. And, you know, for you guys that are watching, um, you know, the point, the thing is, is that, um, a, a few, a few people told me, that the way I talk about it is easy to understand. So that's nice, you know, and um, it's accessible, you know, so that's nice. So maybe that's where I'm a little bit different, you know, plus like, um, and you you know what you're looking at, right? So uh, 
And then the thing, I guess the only other thing is, is that like, you know, being off of YouTube, like not being a contact content creator and then coming back at first, it was like, ugh, I had that itch, not physical itch, the, um, you know, like mental itch to, to be on. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not talking about the astrology, but, um, and then I was just, it kind of went away. And then I was, you know, it did give me a chance to uh, finish the book that I was reading. I, um, where, where, which one was it? I don't know. It's part three in the Pelinor series um, by Alison Krogan. And, um, and then uh, I also got to dive into... Uh, some other different kind of spiritual kind of um, videos. Um, I guess the only other thing I can say is that it feels like, it feels like uh, take two. You know how like, um, you know, I started the first time and then, and it's only been a month, right? It's only been a month, but it's like now take two, start again, right? So, um, and all of the things that go along with that. So, uh, I like that. Yeah. And what else? I don't know. It's really hot here. <laughs> and it's humid. It's really hu Like, the humidity is ridiculous. The, the humidity is like 90-some percent or something stupid. But um, I'm trying to think if there's something else that... I'm trying to remember if there was something else I wanted to tell you. I can't think. No, I think that's about it. Um, That's long enough, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry for um, not going sign by sign. But, you know, pretty soon on, uh, I think it's Sunday. Sunday we have... Um, Mars going into Taurus and leave so it means it'll leave Aries which will be a lot nicer because Mars and Aries is a little bit combustible it's a little bit too strong for my personal taste just because I'm an Aries but you know and it the funny thing is it depends too because I have been keeping track to see how this these transits have been affecting my personal life and um, it's just so interesting because, you know, it's not like I memorize it and I'm like, I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh, okay, these are the transits. No, like I just go about my day and then like if something unusual happens, I'm like, wait, wait, something unusual happened. What's happening in the sky? And it, it almost always corresponds to, uh, you know, what, you know, it corresponds, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, enough. Enough with my rambling. I really enjoyed talking to you guys. <laughs> um, and thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Bye.